In this exercise, you can learn to apply custom keyboard controls to Canvas applications and games. We can reference the key down and key up events of the document, which returns information to us about what keys the user is pressing on their keyboard. First, before we dabble with code, let's take a look at the finished product. We'll be able to hit our D, W, S, and A keys to move an object around in space. We're going to resume with the same code that we left off with in the very last exercise where we were animating a background and then we had some object floating in space there. Now what I want to do is I want to treat that orange object as a player. So what I can do is just take this background object that we created in the last lesson and right under it I'm going to create a player object. We're going to need the X property, the Y property for the player. The width of our rectangle was 50 by 50. So that's going to be the width here. 50 by 50. Now I can remove this if condition within the render function. And I'm also going to leave this method named render. So the background object can have a render method. And the player object as well can also have its own render method. And this one's going to be fill rect method. And we're going to put this X then this Y, then this width, and this height. So you'll know it'll have a 50 height and a 50 width when it's drawn to the canvas. So let's type in ctx.fillstyle, and you can set your fill style outside of the render function is equal to orange. Now we can create a new instance of that player object. We'll name it player, and it'll be equal to new instance of a player object. Now instead of drawing it here, to the canvas. I'm just going to do the same thing I'm doing with the background and I'm going to say player.render to call the render method for the player object. Now if we look at that in our browser we see we get the player object tucked in the 0x and 0y position. Now let's say you wanted a different default position we can just say player.x is equal to 100 so it'll be 100 pixels to the right and player dot y will make that equal to something like 225 and now it'll be somewhere set around the the middle tucked off the left edge a little bit so we need a new event listener for the document for the on key down event so let's go ahead and just grab this listener and we're going to put it in place here underneath our animate interval variable so we'll pop it in right there, make sure we indent it correctly, and let's remove the init canvas, and we're going to change window to document, add event listener of key down. And then whatever code we want to execute, anytime a key is pressed down on the keyboard is going to go right here. Now within that function, we're going to create a variable called key press, and we use the event.keycode property in order to get the string of the key. So the key code is a number but it corresponds to a certain key on the keyboard and you can get that whatever key that happens to be using string dot from tar code and pass the event dot key code through it and for testing purposes let's just alert ourselves the key code and then concatenate to that string the resulting key that was pressed we'll put a bar in between them now run this in your browser and then press any key so I pressed the S key and it's key code is 83 okay now if I press the W its key code is 87 if I press the A its key code is 65 so if you want to press the space bar see if I press the space bar its key code is 32 but it has no string value and other keys are like that too like shift I think see it just gives you that block looking thing but its key code is 16 so you can still target it if you want to by its raw key codes but to keep it simple we're just going to target the WASD keys by their actual string alright so I can comment this alert out now all we need is some if condition logic so we'll type in if open close parentheses opening curly brace and closing curly brace we want to take this key press variable and then write if key press is equal to W what we're going to do in that case is take the player dot y position and we have to move the player up so we're gonna say minus something like three I gotta have my equal sign in there it's gotta be minus equals three now let's see what we get press the W key and we get upward movement now all we need is downward movement and side to side so we can take that if condition and say else if 
key press equals the S key, then we want to go in the Y position plus equals 3. So 3 pixels down. And we can take that else if, copy it, else if key press is equal to A. Then we want to move on the X plane minus equals 3. That will move it to the left. Then one more else condition, else if key press is equal to D key, then we're going to plus equals 3. Let's see what we get. Let's press D, S. So if you just press it once, it's only going to move the three pixels. But if you hold it down, it will continue to move, and it'll seem like it's kind of animated. If we put that on just regular minus minus, you'll see it moves slower, but it moves smoother. Let's just change these all to minus minus and plus plus. That way it'll move by one pixel each time. Test that. See, it's a little bit smoother, but it's slower. So I'll put that back on threes. And you can also set this as a variable, which could be way up here. If you want to set a var up top somewhere in your application, var distance is equal to, or just make it say dist is equal to three. And then you can place that where all these threes are. That way you don't have to change all of these threes if you want to change them to a two or a five. You just change the dist variable in one place. Okay, let's see what we get now. Alright, it's looking good. So that's how you can add keyboard controls to your applications and games. And you can target any keys that you want.